Hey everyone, this is Andre and Soli with Peace, Love, and Chocolate. Uh, this is our podcast where we attempt to bring back the family and bring back traditional values. Today we are here. I am here with my wife, Soli, in case you didn't know. We are married and we do have a baby. <laughs> uh, we are married. Oh. <laughs> We're not married anymore. He's not wearing his ring. Hey, hey. Uh, it's fine, though. I don't need a man. Yeah, you're a strong, independent black woman. You don't need no man. Um, so we're bringing back. Intro. We're bringing back. What are we doing? I already for? said that. Oh, I missed <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, um, so today we have a very fun topic. I feel like this topic is actually pretty controversial because there's a lot of different opinions about this even though like it might seem oh that's nice but the topic today is friendship so we're going to be talking about how friendships met no friendship today we're talking about male to female friendships and uh, how to go about them in well first of all if you can be friends with the opposite gender, sex, Mm -hmm. or if you can't at all, and how to navigate them within um, when you're single, when you're dating, when you're married. So I decided I just went and asked some of our, not some of our followers, all of our followers are welcome to answer. So I went and asked, and I'm going to read some of the responses. So first of all, I asked, can guys and girls be just friends? And 65% of people said yes. And 35% of people said, no, Mm. it is not possible. And um, I want to read what some people said. So someone said, yes, if you are both married and also friends with their wife slash husband. Um, Somebody said, friend zone, crying, laughing emoji. (laughs) I know about that. Listen to our um, podcast about how we met a couple episodes ago. Yeah. yeah, I know all about the friend zone. Um, our story. Uh, that's the episode, Our Story. That's the one. Yeah, the one about our story. This person said, be respectful adults who recognize healthy communication and boundaries. Um, someone said, with proper boundaries, they can be. Uh, my brother said, sisters and brothers, which we're not really going to talk about sibling friendships today but i agree (laughs) (laughs) you can be friends with your siblings that are the opposite gender josie you're my friend if you're listening which you're probably not but you should listen anyways um and this person said if you've known him slash her for so long that he slash she feels like a brother or a sister which is kind of similar to what josie said but also not because they're not blood siblings but we're gonna get into it today to sharing our thoughts and opinions and facts and things like that um of course we're going since we are christians we are gonna try to come at this from you know a little bit more of a biblical perspective too but also just share our thoughts and also common sense yeah and just logic too so uh I found this quote, which I thought was interesting, and it's by this lady, Dr. Soroya Bakches. She's 51 years old, and she's a psychiatrist, which I don't really care that she's a a doctor or psychiatrist because you don't really be taking those people at their words because a lot of psychiatrists be crazy. I feel like I want to say something about that real quick. What? Um, It's not to say that we don't think that there is some value or some things that you can learn obviously in education like a psychiatrist or that we don't trust any psychiatrist however it's wouldn't go our go-to it wouldn't be our go-to um advice seeking or counsel thing to do would you know that wouldn't be the first thing to do is to go seek a psychiatrist so we take their opinion um, as we would anyone else's, really. Yeah, and I don't necessarily... I just want to read this because I just think it's interesting, and I'll talk about whether we agree or disagree or whatever, but she says, while men and women can be friends, it is difficult for the relationship to be entirely platonic. Do you know what platonic means? Yes. Okay, well, I had to Google it. <laughs> go ahead and say the definition. Platonic means, like... Here, let me just tell you. <laughs> well, I can tell from yeah, my Guatemalan experience... <laughs> um, 
what platonic means. Usually when you say we have a platonic relationship or it's my platonic love, it means like it will never be. So that's why I know that what that word means because it's like on a, <laughs> on a plane that isn't like real. Yeah, it says um, intimate and affectionate but not sexual of love or friendship, yeah. Which I guess it's a good point because a lot of people just immediately go to sex. Or if you actually think about it, if there's no physical or, or um, you know, if there's no sexual or physical, like, contact that crosses the line, besides, um, you know, emotional attachment, that's what really people consist as, like, crossing the line is, like, the physical aspect. Other than that, you're just friends, you know? Yeah. Um, so, but she's saying that it's actually not possible at all to have that. Um, she says, our genetics simply drive our attraction to the opposite sex. The likelihood that at least one party is drawn to the other sexually is very high, regardless of whether or not anything ever comes from it. This is the reason jealousy and infidelity exist. We are not wired to be a monogamous species, which I don't know about that. What do you, what do you think we're not wired to be a monogamous species? I just want to know what you think of that because... <laughs> well, that, it's an interesting phrasing, we're not wired to. You know, like some people are not necessarily wired to, you can say, to not be alcoholics. Some people are not wired to um, not be promiscuous some people are not wired to do bad things Mm -hmm. uh, or to do positive things so just because you say oh i'm not wired to that doesn't give you an excuse not to behave in a certain way in a different way yeah i think that's true because we like if you think about it in the worldly sense like men in general have like that well this is kind of okay a little PG-13. But, like, men have that desire. Andre said this, to, like, want to spread, spread their seed. Spread their seed. Which is <laughs> why they have that, like, sex drive that they're inf- infamous for or famous for. Yeah. Um, and nowadays, it's it's um, all changing a lot because the women want to be like men. And so now they're like, oh, I have a sex drive, mm-hmm. a high sex drive, too. It's like, well, naturally, if you just let nature take its course that typically hasn't been the case Mm -hmm. and naturally men do have that but what you have to do is take control of that desire because it's not good to actually spread your seed with all the everyone just you should just do that with your wife as the bible says so anyways that is kind of a tangent to today's topic um i found this really good article from desiring God.com and then I'm going to be referencing it a lot because I feel like it is really helpful but first I forgot I wanted to say what has your experience Andre been like with having relationships um, with girls like well, friendships not I had dating. a ton of we're not talking about dating really well it could be anyways. I had a ton of and, and I have a, a lot of friends that are girls especially because I grew up with two sisters so growing up with two sisters I was the only boy so the best not the best but a lot of friendships were um with girls just came naturally to me however it it's very different when you're married because when you are single a lot of those friendships are you know platonic like that says that means that also you know it it means that you have no might not have any desire or it might not be um ever crossing the line but there's always a possibility that it can lead into a relationship, that it can lead into something romantic. So even though you might just be friends for a little bit, you know, there's always, it's like you're on this path of friendship and at any moment you can just cross into a relationship or a romance or a um, fling or whatever. Mm-hmm. So um, that's why so, when I started to, to date you solely and I knew I wanted to marry you, uh, I started to not have, I, I still have, you know, friends obviously that mm-hmm. are girls, but... I know who they are and I know them (laughs) for the most part. You cut off the part of like close friends. You say, no, I'm not going to be a close friend with you anymore unless you are as close friend or at least you're as involved with me as you are with my wife. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is because you don't want any any like weird things going on there where it's like, oh, I'm really close to. It's just it's obvious and it should be obvious. Yeah. If you have if you're dating someone, you know. And especially if you're married to someone, um, then it should be obvious, like, there is no close friendship you're going to have with another 
with a friend of the opposite sex that is going to be closer to you than they are to your spouse. So why do I want to ask you, like, do you feel like most of those friendships, like you were just friends or did you ever like, did you have a sense of like, okay, something like, even if you weren't that attracted or attracted in any way, but was there like that sense of like, okay, this could turn out to be something more or is that something that you were conscious of? Did that happen a lot? Like, what do you, what do you think? You're not conscious of it every day or every time you hang out, every time you talk. It's not something that you just say like, oh, tomorrow we can be a romance. No, like you can be friends for a long time. What what does happen is that, like I said, there's that little seed that is like at any point it could turn into it. You don't think about it all the time. But let's say like you're just friends. You've been friends for like 10 years. And then all of a sudden you're hanging out late at night. And then you're like, oh, you and get let's real say one deep. of the, right, you get real deep. You've been talking for hours and all of a sudden, um, after talking for hours, you're like, this is very deep conversation. And then you realize the other person really knows you. And then you realize, you know what? They look kind of cute tonight. And then the other person's lonely. All of a sudden there's a little something there. So you always have to think about those things because they, they always appear and you always have to be cognizant of the differences between your attraction to the opposite sex um nowadays i mean nowadays it could happen with the same sex too i guess but that's why you're always putting up boundaries to say this is as far as i'm gonna go and that's what you have to do you always have to say no like i'm gonna have a friend for example if i have a friend um and a friend texts me or says something to me i'm gonna tell solely not all the time um you know sometimes it might not warrant like me telling solely but let's say like we spoke for we we back and texted back and forth and she said something funny i said something funny and we had an interesting conversation i'm gonna tell solely and the reason why it's not because she's worried or because like oh i'm worried that she's gonna think that i'm cheating not at all it's just to say like i'm just putting it out there that we're texting and that's it like i I texted this girl and this is what's what happened Mm -hmm. and so it's just like a whatever thing you know it's it's like she's involved in it too and so in the next time, let's say, if we meet up with this friend, and, and she's a girl, obviously, then Soli's going to be a part of that conversation, too. Soli's going to be like, oh, yeah, I know that, you know, you, that's what you said to Andre, or that's what you said, or whatever. So it's not, it's not, like I said, every time that that happens, but you're always, like, involving your mm-hmm. spouse. You're always involving them in anything. Like, if they're friends with me, they're friends with Soli, because mm-hmm. we are one. Yeah, so my experience with guy friendships is that I really had none. <laughs> I never ever had boyfriend, boy, boy friends, boy space friends, guy friends, ever, 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 ever. Like I have one friend that was like an acquaintance. I had like a couple like far, like not even acquaintance, like right before acquaintance and not friends because like I had um, some friends with brothers or like some people that like older woman that would be like mentors to me that I would have like sons and things like that. But really I just had girlfriends and I had really good girlfriends. There was no like drama or anything, which was so, I'm so hashtag blessed. Cause I know there are a lot of girls that are like, oh, I could never be friends with girls. They're so dramatic. And then I see their friendships with guys and they're like the most flirtatious, yep. like, did, they do love you the notice guy like attention. every t- yeah like they e- love I, that without guy attention. fail every time I have seen a girl and they want to like a- they like want to be one of the boys or they like, they're so flirtatious. Ninety yep. percent of the time with those friendships, the guys are simp's and they're simping for the girl. And they think they can't. They don't like girls because. Their personality is one that attracts the type of girls that they don't like. Their personality is the one that's attracting the drama and the cattiness and things like that. And, you know, you you can't... There are not... Uh, not every girl is like that <laughs> mm-hmm. so and you should really seek to have friends that are girls and especially yes, if, if you have tr- yeah if you're a girl if you especially if you have trouble finding girl friends that are girls and you think oh i only have to be friends with guys you like that that shows you there's something wrong with yes. your thinking and with your, your mindset yeah. yeah 
And when you think about it, too, imagine you're friends with all guys, right? What's going to happen when you get married? Mm-hmm. If you want an alpha male, if you want a strong man of God, he's not going to let you be hanging around a bunch of guys. They're not going to be your close friends anymore, okay? All of a sudden, you're going to lose all your friends. So you have to think about that. You have to think about, you know what? When I have, let's say you hang out with five guys and sometimes... Five guys. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm, five guys sounds good. Um, and you sleep over and you do things like that and you're just like hanging out with them all the time. You watch movies together. You go on date, friend dates together. All of a sudden, you get married. Do you think your husband is going to allow you to do that? If he is, he's a beta male. He's not an alpha male. <laughs> yeah. So you need to really think about, okay, what uh-huh. type of friendship? Like Sully said, what is wrong with my approach that I can't, that I only want male friends. A lot of times mm-hmm. it's the attention, attention that guys give you, you know, it's like, oh, this, or they tell you you're pretty and all these things. And a lot of girls like that. And, I, and the guy, a lot of guys literally will just set, settle for a girl they think they're pretty or cute or just, just fun. They will just settle for their, the girl's attention. And mm-hmm. the girls will settle for the attention that the guy gives them. Yeah. And a lot of that happens. A lot, I want to say one story. I talked to someone and, and they're like, oh, I don't know why. Like, no guys like me. I've heard this so many times from girls. Like, no guys like me. And I'm like, that is not, I'm like, that is literally not true. And they're like, it's practically no, no impossible. Guys, no guys like me. I'm like, um, you have five friends that are gushing over you, but you just look at them as friends. They're like, oh yeah, but they're just my friend. I'm like, they told you, they tell you you're pretty every day. They like you, but you, they, you, they don't, might not say it, but you know they like you. And they're like, yeah, but whatever. I'm like, no that's how like they like you and you you knowing that they have a crush on you or that they would want something with you you keep them as friends okay and that's fine i'm not saying that's wrong i'm not saying that if you're single you know as long as you obviously don't cross the line you're not like going dating around and and kissing these boys or anything like that obviously (laughs) sleeping around um but as long as you're doing things correctly it's okay to have guy friends that you know like you i'm not saying that's necessarily wrong they just know that they're beta males, you know. <laughs> but understand too that you you can do that. You can have friends and you can have fun with all that, mm-hmm. right? Not in a bad way, just in a proper way. Um, the point though is that wh- if you're looking for a relationship, those are not the guys that are gonna be good for you. And for guys, if you have a girl that you're interested in and she has only boyfriends, like guy friends. And she's had a, she has a lot of guy friends that she's rotating and hanging out with. And she's always like posting like, my best friend, my buddy, and this is my buddy, and that's my buddy about too. I would like immediately, mm-hmm. I would, Red I know flag. a lot of people. Yeah, I don't know immediately I would say to. that's a no. Yeah. The reason for that is that that person is not ready to commit. And they might be ready to commit at some point. And so I would continue to get to know that person, but not like commit at that point in time. Yeah. Um, first, I just want to say Five Guys is a burger joint. So I'm not like, mm, Five Guys, that sounds <laughs> great. Yeah, I can, no. Well, I said, I said that does sound great. So uh, I hope people know yeah, that too. It's a burger joint. Anyways, <laughs> um, so you don't have to be friends with the opposite gender. It's not an imperative. You know, I didn't have any guy friends. Maybe I was a little awkward. I was really terrified of guys and I didn't want to have guy friends. And look, I'm married. (laughs) And by the way, this is something that that is a nice. I think all guys are kidding themselves. Any strong man is not going to want their wife to be hanging around with a bunch of guys. Like It's just heck, you don't even want your girl that you would like to be hanging around with a bunch of guys. I don't know if yeah. you remember, like, I remember guy, my friends in high school and middle school, that they would be like, when, it, when the girl they liked would be hanging out with another guy, they'd be like, mm-hmm. oh, they're hanging out in, with him. And vice it's literally versa. just hanging out, but it's, you yeah. don't want that, you know what I mean? Yeah, you don't, and vice versa. Um, it just is not something that you should be okay with, and you know, you can decide that for yourself before you get into a relationship so that nothing goes wrong. Oh, he cheated on me all of a sudden. How did this happen? Or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I want to say a little something about that. If you, I mean, just think about, just think about this 
think about this. I mean, l- think logically. <laughs> Society has literally corrupted our minds so much that we think, no, guys and girls can't hang out together all the time, even if they're married. You can just hang out together and this and that. Just one on right, one. Just, yeah, just one on one by themselves. Like, do sleepovers. I've heard that married people have sleepovers, just them with another person, with another g- friend of the uh, opposite sex. I'm like, you got to be out of your mind. Like, just out of your mind. And the reason why is because just think about this. You're hanging out. You're, Soli's taking care of the baby, by the way. You're hanging out. Let's say as a guy, right? Let's say Soli, I'm like, all right, Soli, I'm going to go hang out with my friends. And my friends are five girls. They're all, let's say, like a couple of years younger than me or a few years younger than me. And we're all going to have a sleepover together. And they're all like, pretty young girls like attractive young girls i'm like i'm gonna go hang out with my friend soli do you think soli would be comfortable with that i mean just think about like you do that every so often at some point it's bound to happen that you're gonna cross the line now whether that's a physical line that you say you know what you cross the line maybe like you kiss someone or you're you start to develop feelings for someone or you just start texting someone talking too much or you start saying like, oh, I'm attracted to you, you and, and um, FaceTiming, whatever it is. Like at some point, the pot, the chances are you're going to cross the line are very high. Why not just take it easy and take it the way that God intended it to be? You know, live a quiet life, be be sure to do the right thing and get as far away from temptation mm-hmm. as possible. Yeah. Um, and I think that's also something that is trying to be normalized. Um, the idea that okay. it's okay to to kind of be like loose. <laughs> it's like you, casual sex is becoming a thing. Um, Has been a thing since, well, since the yeah. 60s. Yeah. And I think people are ch- wanting that to be like, okay, like it's just a normal part of relationships. Like, because people have that innate drive like there is going there has to be that sexual attraction and people are going to act on it and it's fine it's normal but it's not something that we should be okay with and that's why i think you know if if you didn't get get our our conclusion is that you can be friends with the opposite sex yeah but we're not you, saying don't be friends with the, with the opposite yeah. sex ever well, what I'm saying is that there has to be a clear mm-hmm. cut line where you say, mm-hmm. I'm not letting you pass this. We're not going to text, you know, to each other for a long period of time. Mm-hmm. We're not going to spend hours talking to each other unless the spouse is involved, unless the spouse is very aware and okay with it and is part of the conversation and is included if they want to be. Even if they don't want to be, you say, hey, this is what's going on. This is what, this is what we're talking about. This is really nice. Um, even when we were dating, I think I've said this at some point, but... I remember that when we were dating this girl that I that I was my friend, you know, she was going to come into town and I knew that that um, there might have been something there like not there was never something there that we were never in a relationship or anything. But there was a possibility that at some point, like, you know, we, I could tell we were both attracted to each other. So she said, oh, I'm going to come into town like I would like to see you and, and like hang out and whatever. I was like, no, it's okay. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I was like, what's the, you know, like, what's the point? I what's think the you point just of, didn't respond. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> respond. And because I knew that she, wa- you know, she was the type of person that would want to hang out. We didn't have a friendship more than just the platonic, like, maybe someday we'll be t- together. It was just like an implied thing. Um, so I was just like, no, I'm not going to hang out with you. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't respond. And I'm sure she's doing great and I'm doing great. So there's nothing <laughs> bad about what I, what As I you did. Hold you hold your know? son and your wife is sitting next to you. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I think a couple things you have to do is when it comes to guy girl friendships is um, weigh the risks of the relationship. And there are a couple of risks. You, you risk like unreciprocated feelings. Um, so like if you get into a guy girl re- friendship, there is always that risk, kind of like what Andre was saying a little earlier. Like if a guy likes you, you there's it, it's likely going to happen at some point that what that a guy will like you in a friendship and the girl doesn't like him back or that you'll like a guy yeah. and he won't like you back. So that's a risk. And that can be sad. I 
I remember watching this video where a guy went around asking girls, do you have guy friends? Like, yes. And it was like, do you, are you more than friends? No. They're like, no, no, we're just friends. We're literally just friends. And they were, you know, like, let's say you asked the guy and then the friend was right there. So it's like, so are you, do you, um, do you think guys and girls could be just friends? The guys were like, uh, no. Yeah. You know? Like and most then, of the guys said no. And also they asked the girls, so you are just friends, right? It's like, yes, we're just friends. And like, so if you said, hey, let's have sex tonight, what would they say? The girls were like, oh, they would probably say yes. That doesn't sound like a friendship to me. <laughs> I don't know what kind of friendship. Literally, literally all the girls said, um, yes. Like if I, if I said, yeah, we can have sex, they would say, yeah, mm-hmm. let's have sex. Which, yeah, which is another risk is sex- that sexual temptation on both of your parts because even if you're not in that relationship, you know, and if there's something that you see like, oh, wow, like, oh, that person's handsome or, oh, she cute and, you know, even like getting deep into conversation, then you risk that sexual temptation. Um, and another thing is just undermining marriage, which we kind of talked about too. A little earlier, the baby's being so cute. So those are just, those are some risks. Um, And we already mentioned this too, but you have to implement necessary boundaries. Yes. One of the boundaries should definitely be include your spouse in everything. And in like every conversation, let them know. Mm -hmm. Um, Tell them like, oh, you know, like I said, talk to, I talk to this person. If you have a friend you tell them what you've talked about. You mm-hmm. just tell them, hey, listen, this is what whatever. Because it just keeps the open line of conversation. You know, mm-hmm. you don't want to be hiding things. The only thing that I don't explicitly mention to Soli many times is if someone confided something in me that is very deeply that Soli maybe might not even be cur- curious about. And it's most of the time, 99% of the time, with guys that talk to me and guys that say, I'm going through this, you know, and then I'm maybe maybe like, oh, yeah, he won't know, tell me like all all, all their... the details, and and it's not that I don't um, want to. I'm trying to keep it to Sully. Is like most of the time, Sully's not even curious about it, or and I don't I'm trying to confide. Know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm trying to just keep it, you know, between mm-hmm. my friend and I. Yeah, another boundary is one on one. This is for these are for single and married too. Some of these. So if you're single. I would suggest being very careful about what you talk about with that other person. Um, don't have detailed discussion of like your love lives, your past love life. Like, don't get too too deep into it. Um, yes, I totally agree with that. What what they and that's something that is wrong that they do in counseling sessions, in my opinion. Um, oh. They say like you have. Did he spit up? No, this is. His blanket has poop stains on it. Okay. Okay, you couldn't have... Life of a parent. You should have saved that for a <laughs> private moment, but that's fine. <laughs> it's the reality of having a baby. Yeah. Um, not right now. It's clean, right? <laughs> okay. I don't know. All right. Well, <laughs> put that away. Um, anyway, yeah, that's something that I think they do wrong in counseling sessions. I think a lot of times people focus so much about, like, Hey, tell me about like everything that happened in your past. Um, everything that you did, you know, or everything like every single person you've ever been attracted to. And I'm like, quite frankly, I don't give a beep. <laughs> you know, like I know Sully's attracted to me now. And um, it's not to say that you you don't you have to put red flags like, you know, don't think about don't be aware that what the red flags are. <laughs> Sully. No, Carlos um, farted. Don't think about what the red flags are. You know, it's not. I'm not saying that. Don't think about the red flags. Don't be aware of the red flags. What I'm saying is, like, if you get so deep into, like, oh, you you were with that person, and so, like, what did you feel? Like, what did they do that made you this? Or what? It's it's really. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, especially if you are dating already. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you know married. the person, obviously. But you have to take it also. Case by case, you have to know what yeah. you, what the other person you, you is like. You have to really just use discernment. Just yes. use discernment. <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. end. Um, yeah, they, our whole podcast could basically just be just use discernment. Just yeah, the Holy Spirit. 
We'll tell you everything. Gives you logic. Um, so always have parents home if you're single and you're hanging out or like if you have maybe you don't live with your parents and you have roommates or something. Like don't be one-on-one with yes. each other at each other's houses. A lot, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a good. That's a good. Good advice, or at least mm-hmm. avoid it as much as possible. Yeah, because or just make it brief. Like if yes. you know picking up, picking up, like don't do that for extended periods of time. Yep. Um, and if married, oh yeah, and never meet one on one with the opposite sex. Because what could happen is that you friends. might you might think, oh, we're just friends. All of a sudden, like I said, you're lonely, and you are horny, to put it bluntly. <laughs> You're horny, you're lonely, you know the other person well, and you've been spending a lot of time connecting. All of a sudden, it comes 1 a.m. at night, and you're like, oh, okay. Like, you know? oh, I am. I find myself falling in love with this person. That's what. That's when it just happened, happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, and some people even take it so far as, who was it? It was Mike Pence got blasted by the mainstream media because they are deceitful liars. Um, Agreed. <laughs> when he said that he does not meet with anyone, not even for work, one on one, that is the opposite gender. And people blasted him for this. But it's not about... It's not even just about accidentally tempting the other person. It's about giving the appearance exactly. of evil. And That's scripture the first says, thing ever. flee from the appearance oh, sorry, of sorry, evil. Sorry. Don't even look like something evil is going on. Imagine it would be so easy for any woman to just say, oh, he did this. Exactly. Oh, he did he that. He raped me or he did that or whatever. Or just to make it look like that. That yep. is so bad that can ruin it has ruined people's lives uh, so this is what i don't get if, if that's his rule why did why would they blast him for it you know it's like he's preventing something bad that could happen either way mm-hmm. either a woman lying or him committing anything that he shouldn't do exactly like, all the way around it's the best thing but people are like oh if you can't even be around a woman without controlling yourself it's not it's about not that about it's that. not about it's that. not about that i'm sure this is it's like people would say yeah. Why don't you, you wouldn't lock yourself with weed and alcohol for a whole week. Do you not trust yourself that you wouldn't get high and get drunk? Mm -hmm. It's like, um, I trust myself. That's why I'm not dumb to go and put myself Mm -hmm. in that position. Yeah. It's kind of like people, you know, most Christians can agree that drinking alcohol is not necessarily a sin. You know, like meeting one-on-one with the person is not a sin, but you have to know what can, what can come from drinking alcohol and um the risks of that can be dire you know so some a lot of christians just choose to avoid it altogether and it's the same with guy guy girl friendships whether you're married or single is to avoid it that's a good way to put it because it's not like it's evil in itself Mm -hmm. it's just uh it can lead into something you don't want it yeah. to lead to. So well, always always be cautious of it. Well, this this scripture says all things are lawful, but not all things are helpful or beneficial. all things are permissible or not different versions, permiss- permissible, beneficial. So you can you can have guy girl friendships. You can be close, but it's likely not going to be beneficial it might not be you know a good thing yeah but um it's not necessarily a sin but you should just play it with know, caution yes. yeah and a couple some questions that you could ask each other um whether you're single or married is are am i spending time alone with this person um with this friend and that can help you to say okay i need to take a step back um make sure you're not meeting privately Oh, complaining about, for spouses, complaining about your marriage to the opposite, to somebody of the same or opposite gender. Just Mm -hmm. don't do it. (laughs) Because especially, you know, like what is, I'm sure some people, some guys, like if I, if me as a girl was like complaining to a guy friend, then, you know, if they're like, that can just very easily create some sort of traction or resentment I feel free. too and yeah resentment it's all that it's just a 
terrible idea. Don't do it. You can, you, I think, you know, Andre and I have talked about relationships with some of our friends, like some of our guy friends, some of our friends that are girls, but we don't get like deep, 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 deep. Like this is all of our problems, like share all. Never. And, and yeah. And, and that's another thing where it's like time and place discerning because some people are looking for like us to share wisdom and their especially relationships and their that, problems, things like that. Yeah, and especially something that the other person is, is uh, sensitive about or or uh, something that, you know, is kind of like their soft spot or something. You know, like, for example, let's just say that Soli had a uh, sensitivity about the way her hair looks, which she doesn't, but let's just say she did. Then um, when another girl came by, let's say that she had like really nice hair and I went, I went, oh, your hair is so nice. Your hair is so pretty. I wish Soli's hair was like that. You know, that would just be rude. Why would I say that? It would put a strain in our marriage. And the other girl might say, hey, he likes my hair better than he likes his wife's hair, you know, Mm -hmm. and maybe there might be something there. I don't know. But it's just something you wouldn't do. In the same way, you wouldn't want someone to say, uh, you know, solely if I, let's say I was, I was sensitive about my hair. You know what I mean? And then Soli's like another guy was was here, and she was like, "Oh, he's, oh my goodness, you look so good with that hair." You know, that's like, why I wish I Andre's hair was like that. I don't understand when married people talk about how they find another person attractive. Like I, I get it if you're like, okay, that person is handsome whatever but like i've seen so many married people like especially on social media like take take an actor for example that has like abs and all these things and like is like a human ken doll or something like that and then they like put it on their social media like oh this guy is so attractive and things like that like i don't understand why people do that like i never want to undermine you know who my husband is because i love him and i don't want to be sitting there like oh i wish you looked like this or looked like that um which is kind of another another topic but yeah but it is it does have something to do with it yeah um and another question you can ask yourself is do i find myself thinking about them or fantasizing about a life with them this is for whether you're single or married as well um, uh, most pe- guys or or non guys <laughs> would not fantasize about a life with them, but would fantasize about something else. Well, gr- well, <laughs> girls, I think are more likely to fantasize about a life with them, a, like the life, yeah. like oh, just being together, yep. and getting married. Um, and then this question: Do I find myself excusing intimacy that would otherwise be inappropriate? Um, I think it can probably be easier when you're single to see that. I don't know, maybe. And just be like, oh, well, like we're both single. It's not that big of a deal. Does that make yeah. sense? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it, it can be easy to just like excuse the intimacy or like, oh, I'm married. Nothing's going to happen. Like, and then it happens all so fast. Uh, and then, you know, asking yourself, why are you friends? Why why do I need to be friends with this person? What am I getting? Um, is it because you like their attention, which a lot of for a lot of girls it is an attention thing. And I remember, oh my word, in youth group at church, oh so many girls were ju- would just be vying for guys' attention, like and I remember thinking, why, like, and they would, like, go around acting like they were the best of friends. But from the outsider perspective, all you saw were these girls just totally flirting, just loving the attention of the guys. And the guys just loving the attention of these cute girls and really short shorts and, you know, showing off all the everything. And you're like, what on earth? I thought this was supposed to be church. Yeah, and, right. yeah. People some sometimes youth group is a is a hub for that for that kind of um, behavior, yeah. um, and you know, yeah. So are you flirtatious? And I thought this was really in, a really good um, excerpt from the Desire and God article that I mentioned. It says 
he's the writer said paul encourages us let us walk properly as in the daytime not in orgies and drunkenness not in sexual immorality and sensuality he says that in romans 13 13 it's interesting that paul contrasts sexual immorality with walking properly as in the daytime when our texts aren't private our meetings aren't sneaky our intimacy not shrouded and smirking we can participate in the kind of pure intimacy in male female friendships that is public and commendable filled with grace and truth so it's really just a matter of setting those boundaries having those boundaries not having the appearance of evil um, that, at the end of the day, though, I think people get caught up in the boundaries thing a little mm-hmm. too much, too. So, like I said earlier, at the, at the end of the day, be mindful of these things, but you use discernment. You don't have discernment. to sit there and say, like, this, these are our boundaries. This is what we're doing. This is what we're not going to do. It's just knowing that when lines are crossed or lines yes. look like they could be have crossed, discernment. you are able to step away or you, you are able to say, like, you don't need, I don't even know if you don't have to be bring afraid it up. Just to like cut. Don't be afraid it. to cut off yeah. friendships. Don't be afraid to say, oh, this is not. Yeah. When you see that something is wrong, right away do it and use a sermon in each mm-hmm. situation, you know, and you'll know what to do. If you are seeking God, He will show you what to do, and it won't be hard. It won't be hard to say, "Oh, should I be? Should I keep talking to this person? Am I getting too close to this person?" Um, especially if you're married or you're in a relationship. Um, I want to say a couple last things. Oh wait, can I say? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what, that was something I wanted to say is hold guy friend guy girl friendships very loosely. Hold friendships of the opposite gender loosely. That doesn't mean you can't see it as important, as a, a an amazing part of your life. But especially when you're married, you there is a high chance you are going to have to distance yourself from your friends of the opposite sex. And that your relationship your relationship with your friends of the opposite sex will change when you are married. And when you are single, you also have to be willing to say I have to step away from this relationship because it's going in a bad direction and you should be more than willing to give up your friendships, to include your spouse in those friendships. Like your spouse should be wanting to. And I think it's okay. Like if your spouse is uncomfortable with the friendship, even if there is nothing there, cut it off immediately. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't. There's no reason to. Mm-hmm. You, you don't your have to be friends. Your marriage is top priority, mm-hmm. way above any other friendship you had prior to your marriage. Um, so that's kind of the same thing I wanted to say to end it is uh, that at the end of the day, you have to use discernment. You have to know what relationships are worth it and what relationships aren't. Your marriage is the number one relationship that is worth it, human mm-hmm. relationship. And, and when you're single, your relationship with God. Is yeah you, is what you you, you must yeah, focus on, not and don't don't think flings. about things like like so much about rules because mm-hmm. especially if you're like me, it doesn't work. Don't think about oh this rule, this boundary, whatever. No, use discernment. Know that God will guide you in in each and every situation. And one last thing for a guy, that if you're dating a girl and you see that she has a lot of guy friends and that her best friends are guys, and she's like, I don't like hanging out with girls. Oof. That is a red flag if I've ever seen one. The other thing is a girl's. If you're dating a guy and he has, you know, a lot of girls that he's kind of fl- flowing around. Um, and uh, Friends. Yeah, a lot of friends. And, he, you know, he's got, like, that type of person. And he's not willing to let go of some. Um, I think guys are more willing to let go of girlfriends, girl friendships if they're dating a girl. Girls t- tend to hold on to guy friends lo- like, like, oh, we're just friends. Because typically it's the guys that are simping for the girls um, just for, with a chance, you know, hoping for the chance that one day like she'll want him or want something with him. So be mindful of those things. Girls, if you have a lot of guys that you have, you know, circling around you, um, understand what you're doing. Understand that you're keeping them around for attention and that even though there might be a friendship there, that at the end of the day, you're kind of like a little using them for attention and um, that is not a friend. And like really. I said, even if even if you're not on the flir- flirtatious side of, well, I guess it uh, generally it is flirtatious. But like it a lot matter. of times, you know, you're just trying to be. I think I said this earlier, but like one of the guys and things like but that. But it doesn't That's matter not, if you, whatever it is, if it's yeah, not a flirtatious, flirtatious thing, is. whatever. A lot of guys are simping for girls and literally will just be friends with the hope 
that if they like you, if you know that they're attracted to you and they like you and you're still friends, it's okay. If you're single, that's okay. But just know that that's what it is and know that that is what's happening. You know, don't hold on to those things too too much. Um, and yeah, make sure that you also just are aware that at, at the end of your life, you're going to be way more worried about what your relationship with your wife or your husband started out like. And where it's that at, is yeah. your priority. You know, mm-hmm. that's where you have to focus on. And that's what you have, even if you don't have one, you know, what will my husband think of this? friendship yeah. what will my wife think of this friendship that's kind of like wanna your look mindset back of on friendships with regret and you don't want to look back on friendships like wow that was an awkward friendship or that things ended up getting weird or mm-hmm. um i just even if they don't aren't aware of that but even if it's in your head like i that was uncomfortable or there was something mm-hmm. about it, it you just have to be just careful. It's all in your head, James. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Remember to share if you're listening. If you're watching on YouTube, like our video. It helps us out a ton. This is Andre and Soli with Peace, Love, and Chocolate. We're bringing back the family and bringing back traditional values. Carlos has a last word. What do you have to say, Bubba? Carlos. He's being so good. <laughs> He's being a good baby. Yes. See you on the next one. Bye. Oh, you're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. Oh, my. I love you. I love you. He's so cute. You did so good, my preciousness. <laughs>